I may have ended last episode by saying we were fighting for three different competitions. I then immediately got knocked out of the FA Cup by Wolves. So that went well. One point behind in the Premier League, one nil deficit to overturn against Real Madrid. The other two, still on. Yeah, that wasn't the finest hour of our football. Alisson Maximum scored, and then Raul Jimenez scored the dumbest goal I've seen. So it all starts from a corner, from Neto. That's fine. That's clear by Zangadu. All good on that front. We're defending corners relatively well now. Sinistera gathers the ball eventually. Dendonka pushes it across the box. Pedro Neto's there. Sinistera, I'm not sure what happens here. Yeah, I don't think Raul Jimenez had any clue what happened there. I say that's the dumbest goal I've seen. The Sule won from earlier in the season wins that. It's the dumbest goal we've conceded. I'll give it that title. That Sule goal will go down in history. But losing to Wolves and then drawing to Wolves, Pedro Neto scored. It was a great goal. Had me a little bit concerned because lost, draw, lost, draw. Football manager doesn't really understand context in the great scheme of things. So morale took a bit of a hit at that point. So naturally, we then beat Tottenham 3-0 away from home. Cavalier with two. Hoiberg then sent off. Sule with a third late on. Right, so Bayern welcome Club Rouge to Munich and Newcastle welcome Real Madrid. How was this fair? I said it last time, but how is this fair? There were two Madrids and Liverpool who I don't think we could draw in the teams that finished second. And of course, we got one of the Madrids. Leon's out good for 75. You're doing it, buddy. Dini's form is bad. Simicus's isn't. Hmm. Adeyemi's injury that he got against Liverpool has not cleared. There will be another week before he's even anywhere near action, so he won't, he won't be featuring in the Man City game either. However, everyone else is back from suspensions and injuries. I may have played Kelleher for the two games directly after the Wolves FA Cup match. That was an accident. Admittedly, he kept a clean sheet against Spurs, but Castile's back in here. I have to reward form. The lineup for this all important match will be Castile, Simicast, Ming, Sule, Lamptey, Nianza, Willock, and Benesser. Loving the green lines there. Diaz, Makoko, and Calvert-Lewin. At the front of that, 22 goals to his season so far. It's not over yet. Thank you for putting instructions on Kylian Mbappe. Great team talk. Coming off the back of a 3-0 away win. 1-0 is not overturnable, as I said last time. But Real Madrid, they've got Rulli as a backup goalkeeper. I feel like he should be starting somewhere. Uh, but this time they're starting with an actual right back in the form of Mahler. Mahler. I'll learn how to pronounce that letter at some point. Calvert-Lewin goes close from a throw-in. But they got a natural right back and a natural left back because, of course, that was Alaba. Once upon a time, he has sort of moved to centre back in recent years, and Mbappe's broken the lines and smashed into the crowd. Goal kick. I thought he might have been offside. Their manager just angered them. I don't know who's in charge of Real Madrid. I don't know if it's still Ancelotti in the game. It might well be. Mbappe's taking the corners. It's gone in. They're being carved apart far too easily, says the text. Okay, that's the first goal today. And secondly, it's a corner. Who headed it back across? Casemiro, apparently. I just remembered I said we're defending corners properly now when I was talking about that weird goal from Wolves. Well, this is going splendidly. I'm sorry. Mings, buddy. Tyrone. Get in the way of it. Dare say it's a slightly large hurdle for us to overcome now. First Champions League year, Real Madrid annoyingly in the first knockout round. I did say this is probably about as far as we get, but that was largely because I thought we'd be in the second level and they'd be in the first level. So my prediction came true, just the wrong way round. Well, look, Diaz, Cavalloin, some kind of respect. Now, I don't want to feed into the FM is scripted conspiracy, but really? Well, I thought that was a corner, but it's actually a throw in. Simicast going to lob it, lob it deep. Sule's there. <sighs> Any other game, that's a guaranteed goal. Benacer on a corner, near post. Casemiro, where even is our player in that? Luis Diaz has lumped it back across and it's gone in the goal. It's going to be ruled out, probably. Oh, it's awarded. I wasn't expecting that to be awarded. It counts as Calvert-Lewin's. The text says something about Makoko. I presumed it was Makoko's goal, but Sule. Makoko actually misses it. I think it's Makoko who's potentially being flagged offside, but he wasn't involved in the end, which is probably why it stood. And Foyth nearly scores. That would have rubbed salt in the wound. Calvert-Lewin with a chance to break. My ideals. Well, some dignity has returned, but they could easily make it 3-1 now, and that's going to make things... Just keep it respectable, lads, can we? Oh, don't let Valverde score. Blimey, no. All right, Federico, we need a word here. We're friends, you and I. Sabotage them. Sabotage them. Makoko's going to get to this, and there's a chance if... Nope, never mind. I thought there was a chance if Dominic timed his run well there, he'd break that back line, but... Nope. Okay, Willock has shown that he is not a Champions League level player. Off this pitch you will come. Gagliadini, on. Makoko is in danger of being booked. Sam Maximan. On. 
Could we say it? Castiles, though, 6.4. That's the lowest I've ever seen his rating ever. Of course, don't forget the shouts. I don't know if actually in this year's game, shouts work on individual game basis rather than... Because I know last year there was an issue with the fact that it took the aggregate score in relation to the shout response. I don't know if that's still the case this year. We scored again. It's being reviewed again. And it's been disallowed this time. Somehow Cavalier is offside from a free kick. Um, he's not offside. Well, that's all right. We're losing anyway. If we score one now, though, I'm going to be furious. Lamptey is knackered. He needs to come off. We do have Mbabu. As Lamptey comes off, and I think it was a, I think it was a 6.4 he was on. He's still on the pitch right now, but and he might get this ball. He might. I might need to cancel that substitution. There was a person on the social media, you might have noticed it at the beginning, that said, prepared for another Lamptey masterclass. And he's about to come off with a 6.4 rating. Diaz, Carver-Lewin. I mean, we're packing this area. Benacer, Lamptey. Sam Max the man's on the pitch. Pulls it across. Carver-Lewin. Oh, God, the dislog goal might end up mattering. We do need two more, regardless. But Dignity's returned anyway. Well, that was the last highlight. Not just sure how I feel about that one. Felt like we deserved more. I mean, just because the game decided that Tyro Mings wasn't going to get in the way of a ball doesn't mean he actually had a bad game. Two more goals for Carol Lewin, though. Should have been a hat-trick. Ah, it was. and It is still Ancelotti in the game. Eight million. I mean, eight million is a nice enough windfall. Tyro Mings will be out of the next Champions League match next year. Don't really know what to do with the defensive line next year. When I see the fact that we've got teams like Zenit St. Petersburg and Club Bruges in the first knockout round that we could have drawn, it's just infuriating. Youth intake happened, by the way. I only mentioned it last time around because I remembered when the preview came through, there was one attacking central midfielder that was being regarded as promising. That was a lie. I can only presume that was meant to be this Patrick Kalala, who is the only one with that as a natural, although he's been listed as a left winger. He isn't. Also terrible. The only, one who, the only ones who might be vaguely competent are the two Australians and Ashley Paul Birchall here, who could be three stars, but I wouldn't hang your hopes on it. Burnley have just hired a Spanish manager, which feels like heresy. How the bloody hell is Sean Dyche not regarded as a legend? How much longer does he need to be at a club for that to be that to be a thing? I mean, sure, yeah, they never won anything under him, but 11 years. Although it does free Sean up to be England manager when that inevitable happens. Fairly certain it's still Southgate at the moment. Yes, it is. As mentioned before, did get knocked out of the World Cup in the quarterfinals by the eventual winner Spain, but did win the Nations League, which I think is what that is, and easily through to the Euros. Although if he has a bad Euros, I suspect Sean Dyche is just waiting, rubbing his hands with glee for that position. Indeed, that first question was something I was going to say. I know it's cliche, but Chelsea is still involved in everything else. We're not. Also, that applies to Liverpool. I think it certainly helps us, although it would have been nicer to have been competing for more silverware. I thought that would be about the extent of the ones we'd sign. Snap them up, guys. I mean, this is, this is the new head of youth development that I acquired. It's got the correct tactical style. Got the correct preferred formation. Professional. 20, 16, 17. Perfect for me. Formerly Barcelona's head of youth development. I'll be honest, it's a slightly weird trajectory. Barcelona player, Fiorentina, Villarreal, Livingston. Back to Barcelona's staff, then Adelaide United, then back to Barcelona, and now to Newcastle. The good news is everyone is fine for the Manchester City match. Nothing else happened, no further injuries. Everyone's good. I'm just going to make a couple of changes, though. Anel's going to come in for Tyrone. I would do Zagadou for this match, but Anel's one match away from triggering that permanent, and I might as well do it here while I want to remove Tyrone for a match. I'm also going to reinstate Dina for a game. Whilst his average rating isn't great, what he provides in set pieces is unquestionable. Otherwise, the remainder of the team is fine. In fact, though, I might just Makoko for Sam Maxman for the start of this match. Again, rewarding form in that situation although unrewarding for him for Dina's sake. Lamptey's also starting because Mbabu's just worse. Despite Lamptey having a recent rating of 6.5 average, he starts because until Mbabu gets over himself, he's not putting in good performances. But Jurgen Klopp's Manchester City have fallen away in recent weeks. 58 points is where they stand right now. 10 points behind ourselves. A gap has opened up between third and fourth where they sit. I don't know how close they are to falling out of the top four. Man U will be three points behind if we beat Man City today. But any point gathered here against Manchester City will see us go top temporarily. Of course, we will have played one game more than Chelsea. But it's a nice place to be in as Cavaloon will get that slightly wild ball and put Nianzao through. Nianzao, of all people, on the end of that. The expected result from the defensive midfielder there. But good vision. 
from everyone involved in that move. Sam Maxson whips the ball in and L's under it. Tyrone would have scored it. Benesset and Rodri have already been booked. Much to, the, much to the light of any betters in that respect, probably. Grealish has been booked. Grealish would be up against Lamptey, won't he? I can see why he's been booked. Just moving this ball between the back line. I say back line, he is Nianzo. You can see him there again, once again, right between the two central defenders. As Sule just decides to give it to Phil Foden, who scores. Not much the actual defensive cover of Nianzo can do about that one. Devastating counter-attack. I'm, really, I'm not really certain. It lasted long enough to be counted as a counter-attack here. Benesser just... Actually, is that Sule's fault or is that Benesser's fault for not moving towards the ball? Drop Tyrone. It's the other central defender that makes the mistake. And considering this match has cost me £13 million for playing an L, I want him permanently anyway. It's not a big deal. So Maximan has got that wayward header from Jack Grealish, so maybe we can capitalise on one of their wayward... We can. Wayward passes is how that sentence was going to end, of course. And it's San Maximan who ironically nabs it from Foden's feet the one who capitalised on our mistake, and Luis Diaz past Edison, who does have the third highest clean sheets in the league, despite the fact that Manchester City have lost eight games. Also worth reminding, we are still unbeaten. We've drawn 11 games, but we are unbeaten. <sighs> Dino has been booked for the 17,000th time this season. They've acquired Salisu from Southampton. I didn't know he was that well rated. So Maximan, though, getting on the end of that speculative crossfield ball. Tackled and Grealish will actually get this instead. Still Grealish, still in can run, although he's headed it back to Salisu Foden now. Going to put Grealish in. Lamptey hasn't been booked, but Salisu now. Can't work out what, what's going to happen here. De Bruyne, Sterling. Oh, Bernardo Silva's in. It's not a counter-attack. Why is the text calling this a counter-attack? We didn't get the ball in that exchange. This is not a counter-attack. Everyone, we've got the entire team back. At no point in that highlight did we have possession. Although we're starting this one with it. Lamptey, Benacer. Nearly loses the ball again. I might have to take Benacer off here because he has been a bit rubbish and he is booked. I'm a little bit concerned about him in this match, actually. So Gagli Dini is going to come on for Benacer. It's an early change, but I'm going to make it. Dini to Luis Diaz. Just don't know the fact that both he and Nianzo are booked. It sort of makes that central midfield a little bit wary in terms of making tackles. Nianzo. Willock whips it. Oh, my Lord. I feel like that's an almost immediate response. I don't know how many minutes have passed between their goal and ours. But I don't think it's that many. Joe Willock, I was not expecting this. What a, what a hit. If it had been about sort of three or four yards to the left, there are shades of, shades of Papa Cissé versus Chelsea about that. And yeah, still take Benacer off because we've still got that situation in midfield. And yeah, three minutes separated the goals. Well, we're getting some excitement value today. Two all in both games so far. Still about half an hour probably to go in this one if you factor in injury time. That was a woeful ball, but Nianzo gets it back. There are times where I just feel like Nianzo is just everywhere. Gagliadini, Cavalluin, puts Willock in again. Out across to Lamptey, who's got a bit of space to run into. Can't put the ball across. There's people waiting in the middle of Lewis Dias, one of them. Felt like I turned into a bit of a horse racing commentator there temporarily, but Nianzo. Willock, Gagliadini, this highlight isn't over. Sam Maximan's going to be put in. Put it across the box. Okay, Nianzo tired and book to start on. Lewis Dias has scored, but he is tired. I think we bring Makoko on, move Sam Maximan over to his preferred left-hand side. As much as I hate taking off one of the better players, Luis Diaz was dead on his feet, and a bit of pace up front cannot really hurt, really. Getting some fresh legs in up there. Sam Maximan, of course, if he can get this ball across. Someone was fouled in the middle of the pitch there, like completely unnecessarily off the ball. Advantage was played. I saw the text say advantage was played. Sam Maximan's offside here. I would like this to be pulled back for the foul, to be honest, if this is offside. It is indeed offside. I want to see this foul. Highlight doesn't go far enough back for that. Good vision though, Sam Maximan again in what feels like a carbon copy start of this, but Calvert Lewin backed off a bit. Gagliadini. I was never going to get to Sam Maximan. He would have been way offside had he got to it. Dinia puts the ball in. Calvert Lewin, if he's onside here, I couldn't see I couldn't see where he was when the ball was played. He was certainly in offside position when it was received, but that's not how that's not how offside works. And it has been awarded. I mean, Cavalo is not on the screen when Dina plays that ball. He's onside. We'll see it with lines now, but obviously we won't see Cavalo in with the lines. Dini here plays the ball. He's well onside, apparently, when the ball is played. No idea. I uh, don't do this very often, but time waste all of the time. Thank you. And down to balanced. Just no risks, please. 3-2. Three points on the board. We go top. We also help Man UFC 
in their perhaps challenge of fourth. What a goal by Joe Willock. I mean, I just got asked about that. Two points clear of Chelsea, but they do have a game in hand. But of course, Man USC actually have a game in hand on Man City now, so they can tie that up. And NL's loan deal is now officially permanent for £13 million, which means Conte can get off my goddamn back about not playing him enough. Which is weird, because apparently Conte's upset that he's been surplus to requirements. He's played 13 ga- He's played 15 games all told this season. I don't know how that factors in as being surplus to requirements. But yeah, the weirdest part, could not, could not agree anything lower than regular starter in the loan deal. It was a saga, the loan deal. Yet the actual contract for NL when he joins is fringe. This might be one of the best deals I've ever done on Football Manager. Fringe player, £30 million, counts as homegrown. Also now officially 36 games without losing in the Premier League. We've technically almost gone a season without losing. Who did we lose against last year? Southampton. Of course it is. Do we have them in the run-in? We do have Southampton in the run-in. Away from home in pretty much exactly the same game week as well. I'll keep an eye on that one. But realistically... I'm going to play a few games and bring you back towards the end of this season where there's three games from the end, two games from the end. It will depend on how the title race sort of shapes up in the next four. Definitely won't bring you back before the end, but there's a good chance this becomes a three-game bumper episode. If it's all nice and tight still at the top of the table, three-game bumper episode to tie off this season. I'll have a quick nosy at Chelsea. They're in the Europa League, of course. (laughs) They actually had to knock out Brentford from that. Sorry, Brentford. But they're not in the FA Cup. But they do have Man U FC, Arsenal in the league as well. And a quick nosy at Liverpool as well, who will still be behind us if they win that game in hand. They have Spurs. They have Man City. And they're still in the Champions League as well. Leipzig are their opponents. Leicester at home, Wolves away. Not easy. Southampton play all three of us. Southampton are going to be the deciding team, I've now realised. I think Brentford and West Ham might be in the remainder of all our, all of our schedules as well. Also, I did technically lie last time. I said there were no further deals done in the January transfer window. I did do one. It didn't really matter that it was in the transfer window. Chesney's joining as a backup goalkeeper. The plan is to loan Keller out for next season. But he counts as homegrown. Gotta be said, though. What a, what a spot from Arsenal. 34 grand. It's mad, it's mad how little transfer money has gone under, under Chesney in his career. Considering how good a goalkeeper is, it's mad that he's had less than £10 million totals worth of transfer fees. And we're getting him for free as well, so that's not going to change. Not going to be a bad, it's not going to be a bad pairing of goalkeepers next year. Castiles and Chesney for first and second choices. Mm-hmm. Right then, probably about four games off camera, and then I'll bring you back for the final three. I do not expect this, I do not expect this tire race to get any less tight. I'll see you for that climax next week. Until then, thank you for watching. Disappointing sort of today with the knockout, but it was expected. Until next time, ta-ra.